how do you choose between the different tasks and how do you prioritize on, on a daily basis? Um, there are some things you know by experience you need to complete when uh, on a day. Uh, when, when, when you know that um, somebody is waiting for an answer, can't go on, uh, you know that you need to do it. Um, so, so, so that automatically drives the agenda. When you see something go off track, you want to interfere early, that's something you do. Yeah. And what I've learned early on is that it's um, very important for me to have blocks in the day, during the day, not in the evening, but during the day, that are, that are free. So my assistant will know that she will have to keep every day one or two hours free. Yeah. And then I'm a little bit of a nerd, I keep little plastic folders, you may have seen them on my desk, mm -hmm. and everything's marked with a little yellow sticker. And um, when things become urgent, then the plastic folders turn from uh, transparent into red. Then I know I need to really get it, get it done. But it's, yeah, it's mostly intuitive. Yeah. A little bit more on your job as the CEO and, and the qualities that, that it takes. Can you, I know it takes a lot more than three, but can you try to name the three most important qualities or competencies that um, irrespective of the industry that you're in or the company yeah. you're working for. Yeah, you need to really like what you're doing. I was once talking to somebody who knew he was going to be promoted CEO of a relatively large company, and I know that person very well, and, and that person said then, hmm, I'm not sure this is the, the, the nicest of companies, but this role that I'm now going to be getting is, is sort of what's expected of me. And then I'm thinking, wow, uh, that, that, that I find strange, right? You, you need to do what you really like. You need to have affinity with the product, but also you need to have a real interest in people. I mean, this is, we, we can design the best possible strategy, but if this team that's normally sitting here or the people that you saw in the canteen this morning are not motivated to execute it or that strategy is sort of not aligned with what drives them, nothing's going to happen. So you, you almost need to be sort of an um, amateur psychologist to figure out whether you can, can make people tick. I think it's important that uh, you're a strong communicator because as a CEO, you need to continue to tell the organization, this is why we're here, this is what we are as a company, this is where we want to go to, this is the purpose. And you also need to know when you sort of need to deep dive, when, when things, I would say, doesn't, doesn't smell good. Yeah. Leadership for me is um, daring to take the decisions and then also living with the consequences. Yeah. Because very often uh, when people talk about making choices, they say, well, I'm going to choose for this, but at the same time, we're going to be doing that and that and that. For me, making choices is saying yes to that, no to that, and no is really no. And when mistakes are being made, you're the one that's accountable. That's probably why there is the E in the title, chief executive. I mean, it's, it's, it's getting stuff done. So if something goes wrong, it's my mistake. If something goes well, I look very much like the rest of the team to take the credit. Now, I think the most important for me is to articulate uh, the vision and the purpose of the company mm -hmm. so as to, as to uh, bring everybody along, get everybody motivated. And very often it's underestimated how, uh, how much you need to repeat that. Yeah. It's not like uh, us being down there telling the story once and then thinking everybody understands it. You need to repeat it literally a thousand times. Can, can you mention some of the biggest challenges you've had as a CEO? I think the, the, the biggest challenge that we have as Christian Hansen is things have been going well for uh, a large number of years, even before I came in. Uh, I mean, the company did fantastic under, under previous leadership and is doing, and is doing still very good. Uh, the, so one of the biggest challenges is to ensure that we don't become complacent. Um, so together with the communications department, which, by the way, in Christian Hansen, I really love, um, we've come up with a sort of mantra that says better, faster, together. Mm -hmm. and, and we want indeed what was good enough yesterday is probably not going to be good enough tomorrow. So we want to get better. We, we, we can never take things for granted. Faster because competition is catching up. I mean, they see what we're doing. They look. So we need to be faster to market. Faster also because in some cases we have a moral obligation to go fast. And then together, because ah, we're, we're growing a bigger company, right? We, we no longer fit here in all the buildings. I mean, people are very cramped there. We already rented some space further in the park for colors. There's a new building there. We're going to, mm -hmm. And I want people to continue to work together. We're getting more global. So better, faster, together for me is the, is the perfect mantra of saying, hey, let's stay sharp every day. Yeah.
you must have had to make in some sacrifices to be where you are today, both right. personally and, and, and professionally. Yeah. Could you ma mention some of those? Um, yeah. Um, I, am, I, am, I am in my second marriage. Uh, I, got, I got divorced back in 06, 07. It's a long time ago now. Uh, but defi that definitely was a consequence of, of, of me already at that time um, working, working really, really, really hard. I, I, I've become more balanced. That's, uh, and, and you learn from, from your mistakes. Uh, if I look today, I'm, I'm, I used to, to play water polo at a fairly high level. Here in Denmark, I never find the time, I never do it, so I lose a bit of that. So, how do you maintain control of, of the situation of your entire business? Such a big business, so many things to, to attend to. How do you keep track of it? Yeah, well, it's, it's of course not something that I do alone. Uh, and, and the most important thing in, uh, in my job is that you got the right people. Uh, when I joined Christian Hansen, I, I often used the metaphor saying, hey guys, good news travels extremely fast, but in Christian Hansen, at that point in time, bad news doesn't travel so well. And also want to know the things that don't go well, right? And I rather know them first. So you need to create also a climate of trust and, and, and the people understand that, that why you need to, uh, to know when things don't go well. So it's people, it's information. And then it is, uh, it's probably strategy. Um, because once you've set a strategy, which we did when, when, when I came in and we just revisited earlier last year, um, it's very important that you have that in your head and that you can relate everything you do to that strategy. How, how do you reach your level of influence? Do you th think there are any some specific qualities or characteristics, characteristics or things you've done in your life that has, has gave you the opportunities to, to reach the level of influence you have? I think, I think a lot is about uh, personal values. Yeah. Um, it's about honesty, it's about integrity, it's about transparency. I mean, sometimes in a CEO role you can't share everything, because uh, there might be confidential things. But um, uh, if in, 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 in these types of positions you play politics, and politics is doing things only to advance yourself, and whether it's a CEO or whether it's anybody else in, in a professional setting, I think that is a deadly sin, and everybody sees it. Um, and, and, and your honesty and your integrity, uh, you can only lose once and, and, and trust will be gone. So that, that for me is, is, is the most important. My advice to anybody taking on a professional role, whether, whether it's uh, as a CEO or, or any, any professional role, um, life is not a dress rehearsal. This is the real thing, that's at least what I believe, right? You live and, and then, then, then you die and then there's no more there. So you need to do something that you really love. You don't. You need to. You, you can't waste time because that's the that's the one thing we can't buy time.